so let's come to the to the next point. I was recently talking to Adam about this, and I wanted to show you what you can use a variable power supply for. Damn, my cable isn't long enough. Give me a second. Let's just take this one from the solder station. So I have this lab power supply here and the main feature of uh, this like a uh, regular power supply is that you can change the voltage and or the current. So similar to a, um, uh, to a battery charger, it has limiters for the current and or the voltage and whatever. Um, is exceeded first, that gets limited. So it's, um, you know, technically it's actually not limiting the current, but um, it's reducing the voltage um, in order to provide the current that you set. So if you plug this in, um, if you can see that properly. Well, it actually does a lot better job than my GoPro in showing um, LCD displays. So there's a fine and a coarse knob, and you can set it to whatever voltage you need. Um, I will set this now to um, three and a half volts. So you have, a, you have a coarse knob here to get it sort of in range, and then there's a fine one to for some fine adjustments. So I'm setting it to 3.5 volts and I'm turning up the current all the way so it's not limiting the current and you can see here it says CV which stands for um, for constant voltage. So it maintains the voltage and provides as many amps as required up to 5 amps. So, so this thing only does a maximum of 5 volts. So need as much much info as I can get on it, says Adam. And um yeah, I hope yours arrives soon. And yes, this is um thirty volts five amps. And um one of the things I like to use that for is uh, to test motors. So it has four millimeter bullet connectors. So I, ha I have lots of these adapters. EC3 plugs, that's what I use for my um, daily use power connectors because they're very nice and easy to solder and relatively cheap. And I made an adapter. Now this is, now this is actually an adapter I made. It doesn't focus. I should use my um, freshly focused camera here. There's a little adapter I made to um, connect uh, little models like the Inductrix or the Mani QX directly to the power supply to, for example, make some tests how much current they use and when they when the low voltage cutoff kicks in. To test motors, I use these adapters that I get from my LiPo because the batteries have the same connector as the motors so I I plug this adapter in and then I just uh, connect the motor to it. So what is that useful for? Well in the first place it'll show you if the motor runs at all and um, then you can put it on a thrust stand to see how much thrust it produces. But even without that, um, you get info straight from the display here. It will show you how much current that sucker consumes. And um, the 
amount of thrust it produces is in is roughly proportional to the kV rating of the motor and to um, the current is, it consumes. So if you have a couple of motors that look, well, in this case, almost the same, and you don't know um, which is which is which, which is the which is the faster one, I like to just connect them to that power supply to figure out how much current current they consume, and based on that, I know um, what motor that is, and or if it's still in good condition. So I'll see if I can get the power supply over here to the other camera. No. Well, lucky enough, that little camera is attached to a boom, so I can move it over here. can't show the, the display and the motor at the same time. Darn. Where do I put the motors? I'm sure they might. Oh, I see. That's here they are. So I will I also put, put a prop on, so you know, I mean, you can run them without any prop, but then um, the difference in in current isn't that um, isn't that big. So I like to always put a prop on. Uh, these are clockwise. So let's get a clockwise propeller, and let's start with a inductrix stock motor and usually you should clamp it in somewhere to um, uh, to hold it properly I just will hold the motor and the <laughs> plug with one hand and then plug it in here So that's a stock motor, and it pulls. You can see it around 600 milliamps. That's number one. Next one is a six fifteen dash eleven motor. Uh, that should pull a little more current. Let's see. So this one is pulling around. How much is it? 700 milliamps. Next one is, I believe, uh, 615 14 motor. Should run even hotter. So that is nine hundred milliamps. Now, 
comes the latest addition to the family uh, 615-19 and yeah you see in a second why I call it insane yeah let's um, I hope I don't let go of this little sucker so are you ready This little beast is almost pulling two amps and it's already getting nice and warm. So there you go. That's um, one of the things I, I like to do with a very little power supply. Just figuring out how much do these little suckers pull and based on that make a decision on battery size and, uh, um, and yeah just uh, general it's always a good idea to know how much current your devices produce so that's why I put the, the power supply in there to figure out how much does uh, an individual motor consume how much does the whole quad consume um, and uh, and then I use my my current sink to um, to figure out uh, how much voltage or how much how much current um, batteries and connectors can deliver, and based on that make decisions what I put together. So yeah, that's um, that's almost uh, four times the power that uh, a little Inductrix stock motor produces. And that's also the reason why you only get that little flight time with it and uh, uh, the reason why the little stock batteries don't work with this at all because they have trouble delivering enough current for a single one of these little insane motors. So... Um, Pilsner Popper is asking, what was the deal with the flyaway? Um, why does my inductrix not fall to the floor when it, um, uh, when it goes out of range or hits low voltage? Well, the problem is the inductrix flight controller has a preset fail safe or low voltage cutoff. And um, this doesn't cut the throttle, but it puts it to a value which um, the uh, engineers of this flight controller assumed would be a um, a slow descent. That's at least, at least that's what I believe they intended with that, and that is accurate if you um, um, if you use the stock battery and the stock motors as soon as you hit low voltage cutoff or get out of um, out of radio range and um, the the uh, the safety kicks in on this board it goes to that certain um, throttle setting which it's is in turn just a given voltage so maybe it's like three volts to the motors and um, one of these stock motors would spin just quick enough for this little thing to slowly descend and hit the floor. But if you apply the same voltage to a much, much quicker motor, then it means as soon as you hit low voltage cutoff, this thing throttles up and just goes flying. I was flying in Sanity Hoop this morning and despite some weird camera or video transmitter issues, I decided that it's an excellent idea to test some punch-outs in the yard. So, first one comes from back here, picking up a little bit of speed and just a quick throttle blip. Yeah, that worked. And now the 
glaciers to sail back down into my own yard. And now here comes the fatal move. Um, quick dip through here and then punch, baby, and it loses control. Just keep spinning and climbing and bye-bye, bye-bye, little hoop. See you later.